That was crazy. I don't think I've ever been on a bus that big with two stripper poles in it. <laughs> yeah. Is it even legal to let all those people in a vehicle without seat belts and swinging on poles and dancing in front of each other? I think that's got to be against the Department of Transportation rules and regulations. That's a great question. Apparently it's not. I think it must be fine or they wouldn't be on the road. Welcome to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Here's your host, Marcus. Welcome to another episode of Secrets of a Sugar Daddy, the number one sugar dating podcast in St. Kitts and Nevis and the rest of the world, where we pull back the curtains on the good and the bad. And Lily... The shocking. Yes. The shocking, <laughs> shocking stories of sugar dating. I wasn't feeling creative today. You weren't. We're well, st- I think I was shocked that we're back up there with Kits and Nevis. Where have they been? Where have you guys been? We have missed you. That is one country or territory that we have been number one for a long time. And then the, they just disappeared off the charts and I thought they didn't love us anymore, but they ghosted us. Apparently we've gained their favor back because I looked at our ratings and all the countries that we're trending in and it said, number one, St. Kitts and Nevis. So welcome back guys. Maybe you never stop listening. Maybe the internet went down. I don't know, <laughs> but we're back at number one there. We love our listeners. All three of you that are listening there. We really appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> And Lily, what else is going on? Um, You've been posting a lot of cool pictures on Patreon of yeah, the party. I need to get after that. I have a bunch more. It's a little hard for me because I have this list of who to blur their faces and who not to blur their faces. So I have yeah. to physically go get my list and be really careful when I'm posting stuff. So if you guys haven't joined our Patreon yet, you got to do this. Just for the pictures and the videos from last party, I just posted a really fun set of photos of the party bus and the one and only trucker on the party pole. Yes. (laughs) I'm surprised he even remembers that. I don't think he does. (laughs) Okay. Because he doesn't remember trying to skinny dip at your house either. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Well, anyway. Lily prevented that. Lots of great photos and videos on there. And here's another reason you guys want to join the Patreon. Not only is it, it supports the show, so we appreciate that very much. We have a free membership. I do throw some free things on there, so it's worth it just that alone. But for as little as $10 a month, it opens up the entire site. You get everything everybody else gets. Now, we do have some coaching and profile reviews in the upper tiers that you can sign up for. And, you know, if you just, you're a baller and you just want to help out the show, we really appreciate that too. If you are a Patreon member, you are going to get priority judging, basically, to our next concert, our next party, Sugar Palooza 5. Mm -hmm. And guess what, Lily? Sugar Palooza 5 is in the books. We are open registration now. If you go to our website, secretsofasugardaddy.com, you'll find the um, application process. Before, it used to be at the top of our website, and it just said contest. Now, it just says party. So, click on the party tab. Party, people. Yeah. And so, what it's going to do, it'll open up information about the party. This party, this might be our most in-demand party I've ever thrown. Now, the problem is, it's in such a huge demand, I wasn't able to get as many bots for the suite. So it's going to be limited and it's it's on a Thursday, but it's for Shakira worldwide Shakira. She has not gone on tour in a long time. She just put out a new album. It's all in Spanish, but she has a lot of great English songs too. And she has fans worldwide. She puts on a hell of a show. So it's going to be exciting. And she's so beautiful. Oh. And she can shake that thing. Well, I'll tell you what. People know that Dua Lipa is probably my number one crush. And I got to say Shakira might be my number two. Oh, my God. Those hips don't lie. Hips don't lie. <laughs> so come join the cast and crew 
Party With Us, November 6th through the 8th for the Shakira concert. Now, that's going to be a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now, if you fly into Phoenix and you want to stay the rest of the weekend, I would actually suggest that. We're not going to have anything going on. Well, I say that. (laughs) We probably will, but we don't have anything planned as this day. The party will run Wednesday night, Thursday, and then Friday, everybody will be, that'll be the end of the party. So go to the polls, get on a plane, go to the polls, P O L L S, not the stripper polls. Oh, the polls. Go to the polls. That's right. And then get on a plane. There you go. Because I guess we're having our presidential election that week too on Tuesday, which is going to be very interesting this year. Yeah. So anyway, it'll be just after the election. So come party. And and I'm telling you what. Phoenix or just Arizona in general in November is absolute paradise. Yes, it is. It is the most fantastic weather we'll have all year long. So comfortable. And you definitely want to want to be here. I mean, just to party with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. People came and melted their faces off just to be with us. And they had a great time. And they went home and their faces were actually still attached to their body somehow. (laughs) No. (laughs) Nobody died, nobody melted, but I'm telling you what, in November, you're definitely going to want to be here just for the weather alone, and then a bonus, you get a party with us, you get to come to a most magnificent concert, private suite, whole shoot and shebang, party bus, and we're going to get into a lot of that with our next guest, too, because he attended Sugar Palooza 4, mm-hmm. and you know what, last year, we had some breakout stars, in Sugar Palooza 3, We had some people show up, and they owned the party. They just became the life of the party. Well, our next guest, our guest today, I think he took on that role. Don't you agree? I think so. So we've had him on the show before, but welcome back, Jack. Jack Steele, is that what we're going by? Jack. (laughs) Happy Jack. That is what we're going with, 100%. (laughs) Okay. So Jack's out uh, up in the north uh, Midwest, right? Not north, but the Midwest. Yeah, yeah, Chicago area. Chicago. So, Jack, I have to ask. You know you took over that party. You know that you all of a sudden became the life of the party. How did that happen? I don't know if that's true. (laughs) It's absolutely true. I'm kind of a shy, humble guy from the (laughs) Midwest. And I generally keep to myself, which I I think I pretty much did most of the time. (laughs) Bullshit. That is so not true, sir. (laughs) Not sure where that's coming from. But I will say this as I listen to you talk about Sugar Palooza 5. I could barely contain my excitement and wanting to jump in and say something as you were talking about it because that was a heck of a party. Oh, Sugar Palooza 4? Yes. So he's yes. getting excited over the next one. Are you going to come to Sugar Palooza 5? Does that fit in your well, schedule? I, <laughs> if I'm invited, yeah. If I make the cut, then 100%. <laughs> oh, you're yeah. invited, sir. You know, I saw your moves on the stripper pole. We were penciling it. We have a very limited number of spots, and we were penciling in all the guaranteed people already for this party. And your name was on there. So <laughs> right. we've already penciled you in. All right. Well, I'll take that. Trying to figure out how many tickets we have left after we we get you here. And this guy not only danced on the pole, he also made it rain from the pole. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Jack has a little special signature that he likes to pass out to people. And he was making it rain with, let's just say, monetary. So much green. A lot of currency was flying on the bus. As a matter of fact, currency is still at my house. I keep finding it places. <laughs> oh, I was strategically putting it in window sills and other areas just so you could <laughs> randomly find it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just wanted to leave my mark, but you to did. be clear, the whole money thing on the party bus was to detract from my bad dancing. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was just trying to distract everybody and not pay attention to what I was actually doing on that stripper pole because I don't know if that would be technically considered dancing. Let's kind of go through this weekend. I haven't really talked to you since you left Phoenix. So the party happened two weeks ago or maybe three weeks ago, but tell us your thoughts. You got here a little bit early, didn't you? Correct. So I came in the night before and stayed at the W. Right. Which was really nice and hung out by the pool that day on Friday before everybody started to get together. Mm-hmm. 
And yeah. he and then imported his own sugar baby. Yes, I did. He come brought with, his uh, Rachel. He brought Rachel, baby number one. Yeah, and let me just Whoa. tell you, Rachel was probably the doll of the party. Mm-hmm. Like absolutely, everybody fell in love with her. I kind of knew we would the way you had talked about her, and I'd seen her application, and I was like, "Wow, this girl looks like a lot of fun." And you built her up, so I'm thinking. Is she really going to be as good as Jack said she was? And, oh, my God, everybody just loved her. Yeah, I may not be many things, but I don't generally exaggerate. If I say something, it's generally because it's true. And she's amazing. And it was nice that everybody got to meet her and see that as well. She's a real find in this lifestyle. And we talk about that all the time. We meet the most unbelievable people, but you got to go through a lot of bullshit to find these people. And she's just absolutely one of these nuggets of gold through all this bullshit you got to weed through. Yeah, she's beautiful inside and out. She's stunning physically. She has a smile that could light up the universe and a bubbly, open, authentic personality. I adored her. Yeah, she's very genuine and just really easy to talk to. And just, as they say, good people, you know, it's just... It was a lot of fun to come to the party with her and have that experience with her. Because I think, you know, she originally had applied for the party the year before, but maybe she did it on the later end and didn't get in. And so, you know, I know she was really looking forward to this party. And even as the party approached, kind of said to her, hey, you know, this was kind of your thing first. You wanted to go to this party. So if you want to go and experience it by yourself, I can back out. And she's like, no, let's do this thing together. And I'm glad we did because we had a ton of fun. All right. So Um, we're going to go through this whole weekend because there's a lot of points I want to cover. On Friday was the mixer. Correct. And what were your thoughts of the mixer? Well, let me back up and just say I stayed in one of the Airbnbs Mm -hmm. and it was kind of a smaller one with three other people. And you know, part of me was like, oh, I want to be in a house with a bunch of people, you know, and have a great time. But the group that I got put in with was amazing. Initially, we found out that one other young lady was from the same hometown as Rachel. So they had an immediate connection. Then two of the girls were from Canada. So they had a connection and they were just amazing roommates and great people. So that just really kicked off the whole experience on a great foot and on the right note because they were just good people but the, and you know the what mixer- we did that by design and sometimes people got to trust the process lily and i meticulously went through and now some people we did randomly throw places just because we, we were, were like okay we got, we were running out of spots but for the most part we're trying to put people together that we think would be a good experience And even though it was a smaller Airbnb, it was actually one of mine, a little four bedroom, three bath. And we had that other amazing Airbnb in Paradise Valley. It was like 11 bedrooms. And then we had another like six bedroom one in Scottsdale and then another four or five bedroom one in Scottsdale. So we had many Airbnbs. We couldn't put everybody in one spot. But from our experience on Sugarpalooza 3, we had all these small little Airbnbs with these groups of people. And they formed this unbelievable bond being housed together that they did not expect. We didn't even really expect it. So I'm glad that worked out. And I'm telling you what, your roommates, the people that were there had exactly the same thing to say that you said, that it was an absolute joy for them to be in that house with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's a kind of a fine line because some of the women aren't comfortable staying in an Airbnb where there's going to be a male staying there as well. And so we kind of had to handpick which people would be cool with that, which people wouldn't. But the girls that stayed with you said that was wonderful because he sugared us all. He (laughs) bought us food and (laughs) we didn't have to worry about paying for our own meals and they loved it. Uh, I enjoyed it. I mean, I would say selfishly, when I looked at the larger house, I said, ooh, I, I would love to be in that house with 12 or 13 women. And, you know, that would be a lot of fun. But in retrospect, the way it went down was actually perfect. And I'm glad I, I would rather have been where I was at and making those connections with those people because they were really just good, genuine connections. Yeah. So Well, I'm glad to hear that our master plan came together yes. nicely. 
the puppet masters did their job <laughs> in getting the right people together. Well, <laughs> I like to put certain people in a house and see what happens. <laughs> I'm just a little diabolical like that. Yeah. But I had a good feeling that that was a great group of people in your house. So glad yeah. it worked out well. You're listening to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Now back to the show with your host, Marcus. Yeah, so kind of moving on to your question about the mixer, the opening mixer. First of all, the suite it was in, you walk in, it was amazing. Everything was set up perfectly with food and drinks and... I walked in kind of blown away by how beautiful all the women were. I think the first person that I was introduced to, I mispronounced. I think I introduced myself as their name because I was kind of taken aback a little bit. (laughs) And if you've been around me enough, you know, I'm generally not short on words. And so I was like, "Uh, uh, okay, uh, what's your name? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I was temporarily discombobulated and I introduced myself as the person I was introducing myself to. (laughs) <laughs> which is a woman. So, you know, great first impressions. They're like, okay, let's get this guy out of here. <laughs> you know, they but, cleaned uh, up well, didn't they? They all got yeah. dolled up. Well, it was just such an amazing mix of personalities and different looks and, you know, different backgrounds. And it really was just really easy to start connecting with people and having conversations. You know, everybody, you know, kind of had their guard down, you know, living the same kind of lifestyle and being there together with people that kind of know what it's about. It really was kind of easy to just start connecting with people and talking and having good conversations. So here's something, kind of a side note. One of the girls from Canada had gone on weeks earlier onto Reddit, on the Sugar Lifestyle Forum. And I don't know if you've gone on there much, but it's a whole forum on sugar dating, questions, scenarios, profile reviews, all kinds of things. I actually would like to have more of that on our Patreon, and and hopefully those features will become available. But for now, Reddit seems to be a good spot for a lot of people to go get information about sugar dating. So one of the Canadians was a little nervous about it, and she put on there, and she's like, hey, I'm thinking of attending this mixer in Scottsdale, and do you guys think it's a good idea? And she just got blasted by people saying, oh, that's a terrible way to try to meet sugar daddies and vice versa. It's not really a good environment to... I don't know why they were blasting her so much. What they didn't understand, that's not the purpose of it at all. People weren't there to meet sugar daddies. Did they meet sugar daddies and sugar babies? Of course they did, but that's not the purpose of it. The purpose of it was to celebrate, come party with us and celebrate the lifestyle, celebrate this podcast and celebrate everything that we're trying to build and just have a very fun weekend. And there were a lot of connections made, but that wasn't the purpose of it. So I think people just didn't really understand outsiders looking in of what it was all about. Yeah. And they don't understand how easy it is to talk to people there and how accepting and open everybody was. Yeah, hard to convey the truth about the atmosphere and the environment that you've both created in that event for people to just feel comfortable and be themselves. Exactly like you said, this wasn't about pressure, like, oh, I need to meet somebody Mm -hmm. that I need to start something. This was like, let's just meet some people that think similar to me, have a good time party a little bit and just connect and it was just a great opportunity to see what truly good people are engaging in this lifestyle it's just regular people it's just people that are down home genuine and nice and caring and it's not anything derogatory but you kind of have to see it i guess to believe it and i found myself not only having conversations with people about sugar dating and their experiences, but about business and networking opportunities and things that they were trying to get into career wise. And I just love giving what advice that I can to people from my little experience in a certain field. Like I talked about real estate with a lot of people who were very, very interested in that. So there is so much more than just chatting to people about sugar dating. It was not yeah, Swinger would, Palooza. <laughs> it was not Swinger no. Palooza, no. I would say 95% of my conversations had nothing to do with the lifestyle at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
that might have been casually mentioned, but it was really just connecting with people and getting to know them or talking business with them or what their aspirations are and what they're pursuing and just normal conversation. It really had nothing to do with the sugaring lifestyle or sugar dating for most of the conversations I had. Right. And the beautiful thing is I've been to parties before where I'll see somebody that's very attractive and I am nervous as fuck to go talk to them or, you know, what if, what if I get rejected? What if she thinks I'm too short? All that goes out the window at our parties. You can walk up to anybody and start chatting and they'll chat right back with you. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. There was nobody that was standoffish or shut down. Everybody was kind of an open book and willing to connect and talk. You know, you just kind of had to make your way around the room. And, you know, I tried to do a lot of that, just kind of bopping around and having different conversations with different people, because that was really my goal was just to kind of connect with and hear the stories of as many people as I could while I was there. Yeah. Lily, you experienced the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. As I said before, my only disappointment was that I couldn't spread myself thin enough because I don't feel like I got to have a full on conversation with everyone because we had far too many people to do that. (laughs) We had a lot. So I was very happy when some people came in early and some people stayed afterward a couple Mm -hmm. of days because then I finally was able to make those connections. Yeah. Okay. So the mixer went really well. Anything else from that night? No, just I think in general, it was just a great introduction to people. It seemed like everybody had fun. In my opinion, I didn't see anybody overdoing it, you know, from the standpoint of drinking too hard. Or We tried to warn them. <laughs> don't, yeah. Don't, people yeah. just don't yeah, go just all out to, the first night. Yeah, have a good time and make those connections. So, yeah, yeah I think it was the suite itself was gigantic. Mm -hmm. And so there's lots of room to feel comfortable in having a little sidebar conversation with somebody. You weren't on top of each other. So it was really a great opportunity. So, you know, thanks to Bad Brad or Bad Brad. Is that right? Yeah. Bad Brad. For offering to do that and stepping up and sharing his room with everybody, because that was certainly nice of him to do. Yeah. Okay. Then that takes us to Saturday, which is the actual concert day. So how was your Saturday? So Saturday was good. I spent the morning mostly in bed, kind of recuperating and generating myself and my energy. And then our whole group in the Airbnb got together and headed over to the pregame party at your place. Mm -hmm. And that was a sight to see. I mean, the setup, the aesthetic was beautiful. The way the food was set up, the way the bar was set up was just really eye-catching and just a lot of fun. I was kind of surprised to see how professionally laid out that looked because so was I. Like you didn't so want was I, Jack. Oh, I'm just sitting here patting myself on the back. So was I, Jack. <laughs> you, you should. You should. I mean, it really was great. I mean, some of the stuff I almost didn't want to eat because it looked too good. Well, know? that was the problem. Uh, A lot of the stuff did not get eaten because it was so well laid out. People didn't want to touch it. Noted. Next time, <laughs> yeah, ugly food. Right. There'll be ugly food. <laughs> or an ugly, pre- uglier presentation. That's what it, the presentation was so cool. And guys, yeah. we have pictures of what Lily and her minions did for our pre-party. You definitely want to see those on the Patreon group. So I've got a link to it at the bottom of this podcast and on our website or the description of this podcast. So you definitely want to go there and and see that because it's it's worth it. She did an amazing job, Lily did, and her little helpers. We've we've named them already before. Oh gosh, I couldn't have done it without the crew. Yeah. They just jumped in and helped me. I mean, just evidenced by what you saw when you walked in, the amount of time and thought put into the way everything looked, the way everything was set up. Everything just seemed to hit like right on schedule. And I mean, at least that I saw, I saw no glitches in anything. It was just, everything was run so well. I'm sure it took a lot, a lot of work behind the scenes that nobody saw to coordinate it and make it run that easily and so seamlessly. But as a guest, I never felt like I was wanting anything or needing anything everything seemed to be right there at my disposal whenever I wanted it. And and that's a a great way to throw a party. Okay. So the pre-party went really well. And then you walk outside and what did you think of that monstrous party bus that was in front of my house? (laughs) 
That was crazy. I don't think I've ever been on a bus that big with two stripper poles in it. <laughs> Is yeah. it even legal to let all those people in a vehicle without seat belts and swinging on poles and dancing in front of each other? I think that's got to be against the Department of Transportation rules and regulations. That's a great question. Apparently it's not. I think it must be fine or they wouldn't be on the road. Yeah. Because they have uh, advertising right on the side of that bus. Yeah, like Scott Costa Limo Company. Or and they have like. pictures on their website yeah. of maybe not while the bus was moving, but of people enjoying those stripper <laughs> right. poles. I mean, if we had to stop suddenly, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We might have had like 20 people that were in the middle of the bus just come flying forward. <laughs> yeah, no, we wouldn't Gosh. want that to happen. But the party bus, I think the people who hadn't been to the party before, I think it took them a little bit by surprise on what an active environment that just kind of begins the whole night as we ride to the concert. Yeah. Yeah. I think it really set the tone because, you know, we're all kind of spread out and eating and drinking and kind of in little conversations and that pulled us into a closer environment. So we were kind of all together and maybe it started a little slow, but we got some music going and then all of a sudden there were people up dancing and, mm-hmm. I think it just was like a, a really great bonding experience. I think that was one thing that just kind of pulled us all together. Like, oh, man, this is going to be off the chain here. Though, If this is starting like this, uh, <laughs> what is the rest of this night going to be like? Yeah. So we get to the arena and we finally make it up to our suite. Anybody that was following me got lost a couple times because I went up the wrong escalator. But we finally Marcus made it. Marcus took us on a tour <laughs> yeah. of the entire yeah. Footprint was, Center. I was in that group. I yeah. was in that group. Same. Oh, most like, everybody was. was. We're going up. in circles. <laughs> we're going in circles. Yeah, we're going in circles. That's all right. We needed to work off you know, some of the calories that we had already eaten. Anyway, so we get to the suites. What were your thoughts of that? The suites were amazing. I mean, big, huge suites everything you wanted to drink you had stuff to eat just again set up very well great view and, too huh? uh, oh right across from the stage mm-hmm. uh, dead center you, on one of yeah, them Yeah, dead center down the middle they were amazing i don't know how you pulled off those locations on the suites but they were definitely prime well locations. i had two the one that was dead center i also had the one next door but as we added people to the party I had to forfeit that one and get the other bigger one, the one that with couches and stuff off to the side a little bit, which was still a great view. But for me to accommodate as many people that we ended up inviting to the party. Yeah. So I almost had two of them dead center, but anyway, it was still worked out good. Yeah, no, I thought it was great. I mean, I kind of, bounced back and forth between suites just and and it kind of gave you a little bit of separation to be in a little bit of a different group for Mm -hmm. a while and connect with different people then change that up and come over so i actually liked having that separation it just changed the scenery up just a little bit Mm -hmm. and some of the people that were deciding to hang out in one suite versus the other i know there were other people like me i think that were bouncing around back and forth so i was bouncing around people that just hung out yeah yeah it was great what were your thoughts of the music The music, awesome. A great mix of the original music that the bands were known for, plus some great covers that Mm -hmm. they did. I thought the music was awesome. I I loved when uh, Hootie fan. I loved when Collective Soul did the ACDC Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap cover. Me too. Loved that. And then the Hootie cover of REM Losing My Religion was such. Oh, I love that song. Mm -hmm. I thought he did a fantastic job on that one. The mix on the covers was kind of just nice to throw in there Mm -hmm. because there's some really good classic songs that I think connected with a lot of people. So uh, it was a great choice. I'm sure Shakira will be okay, too. (laughs) Shakira. (laughs) Oh, man. I tell you what. I've actually been wanting to see her for a long, long time. It's just I've never been able to catch her on tour. And as soon as she announced it, Alejandro was like, you're buying a suite today. You don't have a choice. Buy it now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so we got yeah, it. But Yeah, that's awesome. The entertainment was amazing, and it just was a great backdrop to continue those connections that had been made the night before and the pre-party. People were just really just having a good time. I mean, you could tell that everybody was happy and, and really enjoying the moment. Well, the nice thing is, 
the suites, you could hear the music. It was loud, but you could still carry on a nice conversation in the suites and you could still talk to people and connect with people. And I don't know if you were there when Victoria did her little party trick and put her foot all the way up on the ceiling as she did the splits. Were you there for that? I missed that. <laughs> oh, man. There's a picture on the Patreon. <laughs> yeah, we have that on the Patreon uh, also. I think I did see that, but I unfortunately was not there for the live version of that. I must have been in the, the other booth. I have <laughs> it on video. Street. I'll send it to you. It's pretty damn good. <laughs> but she did that at the Pitbull concert, too, and we saw that for the first time. I remember Podcast Fanboy was just sitting there with his jaw dropped on the ground going, what did I sign up for? This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, she kind of got it going on the party bus, too. You know, she was a very active participant. Well, in, she's a professional dancer. dancer. Well, she was our yes. breakout star last yeah. year, along with Short King. But she was, definitely was the life of the party in the women's division. <laughs> the women's division. <laughs> she won the gold medal there. That's for damn sure. So we had to have her back at this one because we knew what we were expecting from her. And she did yeah. not disappoint. No, no, she's got amazing energy and, you know, it was just fun to be around. A really great person. You're listening to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Now back to the show with your host, Marcus. Okay, I have a question. So we had quite a few people from Chicago, but not as many as last party, right? Not quite as many. Did you make any connections with the Chicago people and have you hung out at all? No. Well, I mean, I talked to some people, but I have not hung out with them as of yet. Oh, okay. So how so, yeah, about Miss Rachel? Did she make any super close girlfriends from the party? I don't know if she did. I know her and but, Alejandra hung out at the after party. Yeah. Qu- a yeah. little bit and talked quite a bit. So, yeah. I mean, I've definitely talked offline to several people that I met at the party, just not people from Chicago. Oh, okay. I just met a lot of really interesting people. I mean, I did talk to the woman from the Dichotomy Diaries quite a bit. Yeah, Amanda. I, yeah, she's somewhere in this area, I think maybe in the Burbs or something, but I haven't connected with her. And then uh, I'm trying to think of who else there was, though, from Chicago. Actually, I don't know. Last time we had a ton. Yeah, it wasn't as many as last yeah. time. It might have just been you and Rachel and Amanda yeah, that were was. from yeah. Chicago this yeah. time. So we jumped on the bus on the way home. That was even more festive, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was, although a lot less memories at that point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was when Trucker did his thing, right? The trucker on got on the pole. Oh, I got on the yes. pole. A little bit. I, I think most everybody got on the poll on that. I think he was in his happy place. At, Trucker at that point. was definitely in his happy place. <laughs> he swears he doesn't remember, which yeah. I believe him. I've never yeah. seen him rock his socks off so hard. Well, we just bought tickets for another great concert. This one's just going to be between us, but Lily and Trucker, myself and Alejandra, and possibly Dr. JJ and Lynn or. I don't know, but we've got a few tickets for Def Leppard, Journey, and the Steve Miller Band. That one's coming up. We're really excited about that one in August. That one I actually was going to use to host Sugar Blues of Four, but it fell on a Friday, which would have made it a little bit more difficult, and it was yes. twice as expensive. Yeah, so expensive. So yeah. expensive. So I didn't want to charge the Sugar Daddies double. That wouldn't have been good. So... I wanted to keep it, you know, a reasonable for everybody who was helping with the cost. So anyway, we're yeah. just going to go to that one anyway by ourselves. And the reason I bring that up is because I think Trucker might even have a better time at that one. I don't know. I don't know if he can ever exceed <laughs> how so, enjoyable the last one was. Yeah. Of those three bands, who's your favorite? Uh, is Def Leppard the headliner? De- yeah, Def Leppard is my all-time favorite rock and roll band. Okay. And I love... Steve Miller band songs. I mean, they've got just some classic, classic 70s, yeah. early 80s songs. And then, of course, Journey was the biggest band in the mid 80s. I mm-hmm. mean, Journey yep. and the ever, you know, you go to any karaoke bar and they're still singing Journey songs. Even the young kids are 15, 17, 20 years old are singing Journey songs at the karaoke yeah. bar. 
Don't stop believing. <laughs> the one the most popular. You yeah. Know. Yeah. So it, it's going to be a really good concert. But I am really looking forward to Shakira. That one's going to be different because it's going to be in, you know, multi languages. And but it's going to be high energy. Definitely. Question. Were you part of the skinny dipping menagerie? <laughs> oh, yeah. Were you? Well, no. I was a. He was, was an a, onlooker a like me. Massive observer. <laughs> observer okay. Okay. Yeah. How about Rachel? Did she jump in there? No. She did not jump in there either. And I will say that when certain people got out of the pool and they weren't wearing anything and tried to encourage me to come in, took a lot of self-restraint to not (laughs) want to do that. But uh, Trucker would have been all in. I drug him off in an Uber home. (laughs) He would have been all in. He's a nudist at heart. Really? I mean, I would say I am too, but I tend to be conserved out of the gate, conservative out of the gate. And then I kind of let things evolve. <laughs> I didn't necessarily want to be the subject of something on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So Jack and I were basically sitting next to each other while everybody was undressing, getting into the pool. So we were giving, you know, our thoughts and to each other and, <laughs> you know, observing and eyeballs the size of yeah. flying saucers. And and then, uh, you know, the couple girls started making out in the pool and we we're like, wait, who, so who that's is happening. this? What, what? Wait, who is that? <laughs> Trying to figure yeah. out who would become entangled. <laughs> so there was, there was some swinger palooza. A little bit. There was bit. definitely what I would call clustering going on yeah, in the was, pool. <laughs> yeah, there was clustering. But I would just say... As an observer, a little bit more lighting would have been good. So <laughs> yeah, it was so a little too dark. <laughs> well, what's funny is I have cameras not directly at the pool, but I've got them on the edges of my house and they point towards the pool area. So I was like, I wonder what my cameras caught. And you can just see pixelated figures running around everywhere. Yeah. It's nothing I could post anybody's identity on for sure. But it was interesting seeing groups of people going in circles in the pool as they kind of formed like, um, I don't know, like a little bond area or something. Ring around the rosy. Ring, yeah, they're just kind of they're just kind of tiptoeing in the pool, going in circles. And Is that what the kids are calling today? Ring around the rosy? I don't know. I know Jay was uh, right in the middle of that, so he was having a good time. Yeah. We just had lunch then- with him and... Yeah, we still talking about the party and all the aftermath of the party. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he was a good guy. I didn't get to talk to him a lot, but he had a really good energy and just seemed like a great guy. He definitely was in the mix there in the pool for Mm -hmm. sure. And of course, at some point in time, a couple of people decided they would just run into the house completely naked, which was kind of funny, too. <laughs> I saw that. I don't know what they were going in for. They uh, needed a drink. They needed a drink, a snack or something like yeah. that. Get rehydrated so they could go back in the pool for Matter of fact, activities. one of the girls who did that in the very beginning, I was sitting there. I don't know if you were out there yet. But she gets out of the pool and she needs to go into the house. And I'm like, hey, there's some towels. Oh, okay. I guess you don't need one. She just walked right past into the house, butt naked, through the house to get herself a drink. And that's kind of when everybody's like, whoa, what is going on out there? Yeah. (laughs) But that girl actually has made a connection a little bit with Jay. So we're going to be have fun seeing where that goes. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that connection going on, so that was good. Uh, (laughs) Not a lot gets by me in that regard. When I was young, my brother used to call me the roving eye because (laughs) at a young age, the way he tells the story, I'm like a chameleon. Like if there's two women on either side, my eyeballs would go in different directions. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. um, I've always been observant of the female form, so I was aware of people running in and out and keeping an eye on what was going on. Yeah. All right. You know what? And I just thought about it. It's been a while since you've been on, so give us a really quick synopsis of your age and background, because I've got so many new listeners all the time. So you are how old now? I am 61. 61. And you're retired? I am retired. And so you're just enjoying the fruits of your success at this point. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of calling this the summer of Jack. The summer of Jack. You know, I'm trying to have as much fun as I possibly can this summer and Mm -hmm. then see what happens from there. Yeah, I'm definitely 
enjoying life at this point in time, traveling and just trying to do whatever I can to have fun. Yes. What is keeping you busy now? Well, I have done a pretty decent amount of traveling, but so I play competitively play a sport that is somewhat odd, but I play competitive table tennis. That sounds uh, fun. I you love know, ping pong. Yeah. You know what we call that now? Miniature pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've stayed away from pickleball, but I got into the sport maybe six or seven years ago and then started taking it seriously three years ago. So I travel around the country, out of the country. I play in competitions. So I've been, it was in Puerto Rico recently playing. That takes up a good portion of a day. So every morning I practice for two or three hours at a Chinese club in Chicago and then sometimes play at night. So I'll play between two to six hours of ping pong a day, five, wow. six days a so week. So I was watching YouTube the other day and I don't know why it popped up, but there was some clips of some people playing ping pong, table tennis. And I saw some moves from a guy and literally he made this move and the ball hit and spun left, immediately spun 45 degree angle left. And the person couldn't defend it because it was just so yeah. wicked. Do you ever go on YouTube and try to learn these moves that maybe you don't have in your game? How do you become better? Because that's the only way I can be better is to try to find instructional videos on how yeah. to improve my game. Are you at that point uh, or you got what you got? No. So I know a lot of people that I play with do, but I have a very non-traditional style. I more like garbage basement style. So my style is not anything anybody would teach in the world of table tennis, but it's effective and uh, it like works well. It. I, yeah, take them uh, by surprise. I, yeah, so yes, I'm often underestimated. My whole shtick is to try and be the anti-table tennis player. So I specifically dress in a way that looks kind of sloppy, you know, like I can't play. And then I just rock people's world, and, you know, hit balls. And they're like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. That's so cool. I but, love ping pong. We inherited with the truck stop, which is mine and Trucker's new home. We inherited a pool table and I don't care uh, about pool at all. All I want to do is get one of those things that you can put on top of it that converts it to a ping pong table. Mm hmm. Uh -huh. I've been yeah. looking on Facebook Marketplace. I'm going to get one. I'll have a tournament here at my house coming up in a couple of weeks that I've run for a couple of years on the grass. So it'll be a lot of fun. I'll have a group of people out here. I do cash prizes for people. This year we'll have a grill master out. We've hired somebody to come out and cook on the grill, make ribs and everything. It sounds like so that. It'll, Ooh, it'll what's be the date? <laughs> August 17th. Oh, man, I think well, I got something on my agenda. Are you still on seeking? Are you still active? What's your status? I know you and yeah. are kind of a thing, but you're open, right? Yeah, I mean, we are open, ethically non-monogamous, so we don't restrict each other from meeting other people and connecting with other people. We just are very open and honest about it and generally try to talk about it before we go on dates or things like that. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm overly active on it at this point in time, but, you know, I have a few people that I'm kind of talking to, but not necessarily into anything really deep with. Now, I've uh, heard that you run some things by her, and if she says no, then it's a no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I ran into a situation like that recently where I kind of got a little overzealous about something, and then... I Let's hear I it. Kind of <laughs> overstepping my bounds. Do well, tell. I just, I just suggested a group activity. Um, <laughs> a group activity. <laughs> like menage I, a trois. Yeah, yeah. But before I had really run it by her, and it didn't happen. And you know, after I reflected on it the next day, I kind of apologized. I said, "Look, I should have talked to you about the situation first because that person." talked to her and said, Hey, we're doing this. And she's like, what? We're doing what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you so, see how red um, he turned? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So being respectful and making sure that I'm checking with her before I make any decisions, is really a good idea. That's a very good <laughs> idea <laughs> for any relationship. If you want to be happy. So 
that was probably my recent scenario of kind of overstepping my bounds a little bit. You're listening to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Now back to the show with your host, Marcus. Now, am I remembering correctly that you and Rachel have been to either sex clubs or sex parties before? Why am I having trouble saying sex? We did go to a swingers party together. And one of the young ladies that was supposed to come from Chicago that backed out of the last minute because she got sick, we met at that party. That's um, right. We, we were met. supposed to have another person from Chicago, and she canceled oh, like, okay. the day. Like, yeah, I thought day. we had yeah. a handful. Yeah. Short King was also at that party, although I didn't really formally meet him. Mm-hmm. But he was at that same party. That was kind of our one real kind of experience. Was um, he giving tutorials in electric play at that party? <laughs> no. Not at that I, one? I mean, <laughs> I was a little confused about the dynamic because he came in with a group of people and he had his martini shaker, cocktail shaker and all that. <laughs> yep. And I honestly, I mean, this is, I don't mean this disrespectfully, but I just, I honestly thought they'd hired him to, like, I thought these people were like real big ballers that had their own bartender that they hired and brought with because he was like, <laughs> okay, what does everybody want to drink? He you know, loves he's to drinks, bartend. And I'm like going, yeah. And I'm like going, Okay. They just hired this guy to come and do the drinks for him, I guess. But then I found out later that wasn't the case. He just jumps in and does it because he enjoys it. Yeah, yeah. It was all good. I'd never seen anything quite like it before. I mean, you know, it was like a BYOB situation. So, you know, people brought in some bottles, made some drinks. He was like, you know, cocktailing it up. And I'm like, okay, this guy's been hired to make drinks for this group. So They, They really... Roll deep. (laughs) What was the takeaway for you and Rachel from the sex party? Is this something that you guys want to do again? Well, we haven't. I don't think it's off the table. I mean, it was definitely interesting. I mean, we talked a lot about, you know, our expectations going into the party, what we were going to do. And, you know, we kind of said, well, do your own thing, but let's just stick together whatever we do. So at this party, the way it works is, once I think 11 o'clock hits, you have to be in your underwear naked or you have to leave the party. So it's like cocktailing and conversing however you want to be. You could have clothes on, you could be in lingerie. And at 11, you got to be all the way down to your underwear. And you got to so, lose your magic slipper on the stairs. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, we were newbies to this whole thing. So they had different playrooms. So at 11 o'clock, we just went up into a playroom on our own and just started doing our own thing and then within five minutes the room was filled with people doing stuff all around us it was a little bit overwhelming it was a lot of stimulation i would say yeah i mean there were like eight couples in the same room just going at it at various types of I don't, activities i've never been in a situation like that so i don't know how i would react how did you react well I was kind of just focusing on what we were doing Mm -hmm. or trying to. And, you know, people, I think you're supposed to be polite. If you want to touch somebody else's partner, you ask if they're okay with that. So I don't know. There's a couple next to me and they're kind of going at it. And then the woman asks another girl if she can start taking care of her man. And it was like so a lot of politeness, but a lot of switching around. And we kind of, for the most part, just hung to ourself and that'd probably be me too the only thing yeah. i can equate that to is when i was in college i had a boyfriend and his roommate had a girlfriend and it was a studio apartment and so of course their beds are on opposite ends of the studio apartment but you know a studio apartment's only so big it was a long narrow one so that was helpful but there was one occasion where i stayed over and she stayed over And we could hear them having sex. And the girl was a talker. And I just giggled the whole time. I was so young and so naive. I was like, why is this happening in the same room that we're in? I wasn't expecting. I thought it would be more slumber party-ish. Yeah. They weren't slumbering. A lot of people people tried to, like, make a connection and then be like, oh, let's go out on a date as couples and... And that's just where I'm like, I don't know if that's 
the lifestyle I'm really into. I don't know if I can see myself going on a date with another couple. Not saying I wouldn't do it. I just, it wasn't like something compelling for me. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, let's hook up. Let's go on a date together, the four of us. <laughs> We've kind of just put that on pause. I don't think it's not going to happen again, but it's definitely not at the top of the priority list. Yeah. Well, you so certainly we felt comfortable at the sugar lifestyle party. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've kind of been living this lifestyle for about seven years now. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty comfortable in it. And I'm in a really good situation with Rachel being connected with somebody that I enjoy being around. You know, we have a good time together, but we're also very open and honest and not trying to contain each other from experiencing life and having other experiences, just being kind of open about it. How long have you guys been together? Just past 11 months. Okay. So, so it's coming up on a year. So coming up on a year of hanging out. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a good year. Have you guys ever talked about going exclusive or has it just always been open? Never even really had the conversation. I think just philosophically, both of us aren't at that point. I think <laughs> she was involved with somebody before this in a longer term relationship. And I think, you know, she really deemed this period of her life to be one of exploration and doing her own thing and finding herself. Or remind us her way. age. There's a big age gap there. Yeah, there is. <laughs> He's like, how, I mean, is she that? in her 20s? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just yes. saying you're in your 60s. She's in her 20s. If it were to go exclusive and long term, there could be a point where she wants to have children. Would you be open to that? I don't know. I mean, anything could happen. I don't think that's a direction she wants it to go in. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah it's a I, moot I think, point. Yeah. yeah they're I just think, having fun, enjoying life at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's like, hey, just let it ride for what it is mm -hmm. and not, there's no pressure to make it be something. Let's just enjoy the time that we share together and just kind of see what happens. I mean, I think we both care about each other on some level, but philosophically, I don't think that she necessarily believes that one person can be everything yeah. in a relationship. And I think, uh, you know, I'm pretty much on the same page in that aspect. So, well, I think um, Marcus I like and Alejandra found once they went exclusive that it wasn't really for them because they have opened their relationship and. I don't know. And not I shouldn't saying, speak for you. Well, not saying it won't happen again, but it just, it wasn't, the timing wasn't right. Okay. And it's actually, I think it's bonded us even better now. And she was showing me, and I need to do an extra sugar on this because she was showing me all these messages that she's getting on seeking now. And the way these men are approaching her is terrible. Oh God. Absolutely. I like these guys, it's unbelievable. I need to do an extra sugar on profiles and the way you should message people. Cause I'm having no problem meeting women and getting women to respond to me. I went out with somebody on a meet and greet the other day and her pictures were some of the hottest pictures I've seen on seeking. And I'm like, there's no way this girl could be this good looking in person. And sure enough, she was. And I'm like, wow, what bizarre world did I walk into that I'm actually getting to meet some of the hottest girls I've ever seen? She'd only met like two other people on Seeking. She's had her account since 2016. And I said, well, why did you agree to meet with me? I'm sure you get a, a lots of messages with your profile like that. And she goes, well, I'm a pretty good judge of character. And you seem like a pretty good guy versus these other guys that message her. And it's... There's uh, yeah. a lot of creepy guys. Oh, I can I, I can tell now. So I'm actually glad Alejandra's back on Seeking and she's showing me just some of these off-the-wall messages that she's getting. And I'm like, this guy really expects you to reply to this? I yeah. mean, this is ridiculous. Our girl Alexa screenshot one to the girls' group chat the other day and I was like, oh God, yeah, that guy messaged me too. And all he said was, yummy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's meet. <laughs> to your point, I appreciate those guys because if you just are genuine and respectful, you're light years ahead of a lot of the guys on that site. Yeah. You know, to be honest. And, and so, you know, they make it easier to stand out. 
I mean, I haven't updated my profile since I got on seven years and I don't have pictures. I only want to attract what I want to attract. Mm -hmm. I don't need a lot of stuff going on, but that works for me because the women that do respond to me respond to my approach, which I'm not overly aggressive. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to say rude things, you know, I'm going to try and make some kind of connection yeah. that seems more real instead of like, Hey, what's going on? Are you free tonight? And, you know, do you want to go to a hotel room or something like that? Whatever these guys are doing, yeah. which is some of the stuff these guys put out. Oh, I know. So I'm going to be doing an extra sugar on this really soon. So look for that. But Jack, we really appreciate you joining us, giving us your insights of the party, Absolutely. how your experience went. Sounds like it was wonderful. I know you and Rachel were absolutely just fantastic. Delightful. Delightful. Yeah, I I can't even (laughs) find my words because everybody was talking about, and they're still talking about you guys. So we really appreciate you showing up and being genuine and just loving to everybody and thoughtful. It was amazing. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, the invitation to be a part of it and... I'm all about Shakira. If it's, if it's uh, <laughs> well, we'll see you definitely in November. Yep. <laughs> then we'll chat in a few. But if you guys want to get a head start on that party, go to our website at secretsofashugardaddy.com, fill out the application. Now, we aren't going to be making decisions for a little bit on that, but the, I'm telling you, the earlier you get it in, the better. And then if you want priority status, at least become a Patreon member at patreon.com forward slash secrets of a sugar daddy podcast. Like I said, there's a link to it at the bottom of the description of this episode and on our website. It's real easy to find. And then we'd love for you to be a supporter of the show. Opens up the entire site. You get to chat with other members and see exclusive behind the scenes photos, hear all the extra sugars and episodes before anybody else. And there's so many other perks we're adding all the time. We got profile reviews, coaching. Lily, you just did some profile reviews for some people and we're doing coaching and we really, really love doing that because we want you guys to be successful at sugar dating. There's great people to meet like Jack, absolutely a wonderful person, but you got to get through the noise to do that. So we help you get through the noise and, and become successful. A lot of people are like, you know what? I'm not finding any good stuff on here. And I'm like, there is, I promise you. So just let us gotta help you weed out. through those Neanderthals through and it, those yeah. creepers, kiss a few frogs, and then you might find you a trucker. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, <laughs> if you guys want to share your crazy sugar dating stories with us, again, go to our website, secretsofasugardaddy.com. Tell us all about it. And who knows? You could be our next guest on our show. All right, Jack, until next time, we'll see you at Shakira. Thank you. And Lily, Appreciate as it. always, looking fantastic. Thank you, sir. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to connect or even be on the show, we'd love to hear from you at secretsofasugardaddy.com. 